ang boses ng bawat Pilipino. Ito ang PS Talks Express na nagsasabing, Basta palsay, mahusay! via satellite direct from UNC News Center. This is PS Talks Express. This is DJ Trasimar. And this is DJ Silver. Welcome to another episode of PS Talks Express. And now, we would proceed to talk about our first discussion which became a hot issue in the Philippines, which is the murder case of former police senior master sergeant Janelle Nuezga versus the Gregorio family. Today, we welcome two very prominent members in the field of political science, Judge Junmar Canino and Professor Joy Nicole Divaras, LLB. Welcome to the podcast, Judge Canino and Professor Divaras. Thank you for having us today and welcome to our PS Talk listeners and viewers out there. Yes, yes, yes. And we appreciate that wonderful introduction. Good day, Judge Canino. It's so nice to see you today. To you as well, Professor Divaras. Yes. Thank you for gracing us with your presence today. Once again, this is the case of former police senior master sergeant Janelle Nuesca versus the Gregorios. Professor Devaras, what that former policeman did was outright evil and breaks the law, right? I agree. This is because killing is bad in nature as it is prohibited under the revised penal code. Right, Judge Canino? You're right, Professor Dibaras, and in the eyes of God, the killing of another human being is never a justifiable action. But let's lay out the facts as well as the truly of the case. Yes, Judge Canino, allow me to proceed. On December 20, 2020, Frank Anthony Gregorio was caught by police officer Junel Nuesca using boga to create noise in their residence. This led to a heated argument between the police, policeman Nuesca with his six-year-old daughter and the, fam- and the Gregorio family. And based from what I've read, after a brief altercation between the three parties, Nuesca threatened to kill Sonia Gregorio and within a few seconds shot the woman in the head then proceeded to shoot Frank Gregorio in front of the victim's family and relatives. The brutal action of police officer Nuesca, killing an unarmed mother and son, was filmed and went viral in social media. Former police sergeant Nuesca was found guilty beyond reasonable doubt for two counts of murder and was sentenced to reclusion perpetua. Um, Judge Canino and Professor Devaras, for our listeners and viewers who do not know legal terms that much, um, can you please explain what is reclusion perpetua? Reclusion perpetua is prescribed on crimes punishable by the revised penal code and in this case, murder. The revised penal code prescribes certain penalties among them. Reclusion perpetua. Reclusion perpetua is an indivisible penalty. After 30 years, 
the person sentenced to reclusion perpetua becomes eligible for pardon. Oh, I see. And in this case, we won't see Nuesca for a very long time, which is a good thing, right, partner? Took the words right out of my mouth. For someone that is supposed to protect and serve the people, he should uphold justice and humanity within them, and Nuesca does not. Following our current discussion, the listeners can ask our distinguished guests questions and inquiries via chat box or sending a text message to 0930-223-4567 PS Talks Hotline. And for the first question, one of our listeners asked what is the difference between murder and homicide? Interesting question. Well, murder and homicide may be interchanged frequently under the law. The basic and common difference between the two acts is that homicide is an act of killing without aggravating circumstances, while murder is an action in which the people committed the crime of killing having pre-planned. Thank you very much, Professor Devaras. So for the next question, our listeners asked about a legal term that we have discussed earlier. What is the difference between reclusion perpetua and life imprisonment? Thank you for that magnificent question. Reclusion perpetua falls under the list of penalties given for crimes prescribed in the revised penal code. It entails imprisonment of at least 20 years and one day to a maximum of 40 years, after which the convicted would be eligible for parole unless otherwise specified. While life imprisonment, as the name suggests, does not have a definite duration for imprisonment, it is a sentence given under special law and does not carry accessory penalties. So, referring to the actual issue and case at hand, the last question a listener from Naga City asked, what are the specific elements of murder that Nuezga has committed in this case? That's very nice. The elements of the murder in this case are the two act victims rather were killed and that the accused killed them with intent. According to Act No. 3815 under Article 14, which is the aggravating circumstances, the offender took advantage of his public position that the crime be committed in, in contempt of or with insult to the public authorities and that the act be committed with insult or in disregard of their respect due to the offended party on account of his rank, age, or sex or that it be committed in the dwelling of the offended party if the latter has not given provocation. There are a lot of more circumstances relating to this case. However, if I mention them all, we might exceed the time allotted to us. That was such an extensive talk of the Nuesca murder case. Thank you very much, Judge Canino and Professor Divaras. Thank you for having us, DJ. And before we proceed to the next case, we would have a short commercial break coming from our sponsors and we will be back in a bit. If may pandemic, kailangan pa rin pumunta sa local Comelec office sa lugar nyo. Nasagutan mo na ang voter registration form, maaari mo na itong isubmit sa Office of the Election Officer sa local COMELEC sa inyong lugar. Presidential daughter and Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte, Senator Manny Pacquiao, and Senator Bongo, former Senator Bongbong Marcos. Sana all, uh, sana yung gobyerno natin willing din na magpakita ng konting tapang regarding the issue. Miss Tulang nagkagera sa laki na ibinagsak-ibinagsak ng ekonomiya ng Pilipinas noong 2020. Lumagpak sa negative 9.5% ang gross domestic product o GDP noong 2020. 
maliit ba ako? Ganito na tinatrabaho ko. Pero, sige lang, kakayanin ko para sa pamilya ko, oh, ma'am. Welcome back, listeners! For our next topic, we will be with some of the most prominent and renowned legal practitioners in the Philippines. Let us welcome Attorney Mark Brian Buenavista, Attorney Marvin Canaveras, and last but not the very least, Attorney April Joyce Colaway. Good evening, DJ Tresumar. How are you tonight? I'm good, Attorney Benavista. How about you? I'm good as well. And DJ Silver, you look handsome tonight. Thank you very much, Attorney. Well, thank you for inviting us to your show. Uh, pleasant evening to DJ Tresumar and DJ Silver. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having us. Proceeding to the case. Norberto Cruz E. Bartolome versus the Philippines is a case where it was debated whether it was an attempted rape over an act of lasciviousness. Um, so, this is what happened in the case. Uh, a and B were employed by the petitioner and by the petitioner's wife to uh, help them out in selling their plastic and glassware in La Union. Af after reaching the place, they, they set up their tent to have a place to sleep. And after that, the wife of the petitioner and the driver went back to Manila. A, B, and the petitioner stayed in their respective tent. While A is sleeping, um, he felt something on her her top, touching her breast and her private part. Um, the petitioner, Mr. Roberto, ordered not ordered A not to scream or she would be killed. And A fought back, and the petitioner wasn't able to fulfill his um, last for desire. A ran to ask for help as she returned to their. But then she saw Noberto touching the private parts of B, which prompted to leave the tent. That's the, the fact of the case. So the issue of this case is whether Norberto is guilty on attempted rape or acts of lasciviousness against AAA. But before we continue to the main topic, Attorney Buenavista, can you tell us the difference between attempted rape and acts of lasciviousness to give an idea to the people listening to us right now? Well, DJ Trasumor, acts of lasciviousness is an act of making physical contact to obtain sexual gratification. The contact may be by hands, instruments, or objects. However, there is no intention to have sexual intercourse. While on the other hand, attempted rape is an act with the intention to have sexual intercourse with the victim without her or his consent while using force or intimidation. That's all. And that's the two. I see. Thank you, Attorney Benavista. Um, now, Attorney Canaveras, based from your expertise, is the case an att attempted rape or is it an act of lasciviousness? Um, the Supreme Court was the Supreme Court decision was correct. The offense that the petitioner had committed was act of lasciviousness and not atten attempted rape. Let's first discuss why the case is not attempted rape. The main ingredients of attempted rape are one, attempt to have sexual intercourse with the complainant. Number two, the complainant did not consent to that sexual intercourse. Remember in the, in the fact, the only thing that the offender did to the victim was he went on the top of the victim and smashed the victim's breast and touched the victim's private part. There was no attempt of sexual intercourse, hence the case is not attempted rape. On the other hand, why was the case an act of lasciviousness then? The lack of evidence showing the erectile penis being in the position to penetrate her when he was on top of her 
deterred any inference about his intent to lie with her. At most, his acts reflected goodness and lust for her. The intent to commit rape should not easily be inferred against the petitioner. Even from his own declaration of it, if any, unless he committed overt acts leading to rape. Hence, Bruce is guilty only of acts of mischievousness and not attempting rape. I see, I see. So, following that discussion, let us proceed to the rulings of the case. So, may we have Attorney Kolawai to discuss and enlighten us about the matter. But before we let Attorney Kolawai discuss the rulings of the case, partner, here's a short commercial break. This segment was brought to you by UNC Political Science Students. Basta polsay, mahusay! Before studying Political Science in University of Nueva Cáceres, I've always believed that I own the world. That everything and everything that I do is always about me, myself, and I. I started to become an advisor of the Association of Political Science Students when uh, I became a full-time faculty of the College of Arts and Sciences, I think uh, way back in 2010. We consider AB Political Science program as a flexible course for those uh, students who would like to have a, a career in politics, in media, in uh, academe, etc. If I will be ranking uh, the events and the activities that we had, the number one in the list will be our political tour when we went to the three branches of the government. But beginning when I studied in UNC political science course, I learned to care about people. I learned that they deserve certain rights and its access and restrictions to certain rights. I realized that there are certain factors as to why people have or people have less access to these rights. political science student, I learned not to be all the time neutral on situations, especially when it concerns the community in political and social aspects, especially when it comes to like decision making or creating policies for the people. to know the rigors of uh, how our government works domestically and internationally then uh, political behavior dynamics etc you want to understand the political animal then come and join us in the college of arts and sciences ab political science program we hope to see you in as Listening to PS Talks, yes, Attorney Kalawai. Yes, in this case, Attorney, I, I mean DJ Tresemore, Norberto Cruz, the petitioner, was charged with attempted rape and acts of lasciviousness involving different victims. The Regional Trial Court and the Court of Appeals found 
proves guilty of both crimes on his first trial. But given that AAA was the one that pursued the case on the court, Cruz appealed against AAA that his charge is only an act of lasciviousness. The court's ruling on this issue is that Cruz is guilty of acts of lasciviousness against AAA. Petitioners embracing and touching the victim's vagina and breast did not directly manifest his intent to lie with her. In addition to what Arthur Nicolaoi stated, the lack of evidence showing his erectile pen being in the position of penetrate her when he was on top of her deterred any inference about his intent to lie with her. At most, his acts reflected lewdness and lust for her. The intent to commit rape should not easily be inferred against the petitioner even from his own declaration of it, if any, unless he committed overt acts leading Hence, Cruz is guilty only of acts of lasciviousness and not attempted rape. Thank you very much, Attorney Kalawai and Attorney Buenavista for enlightening us with uh, the case. This case has differentiated attempted rape to acts of lasciviousness. And we hope that our dear listeners learned a lot from this case. Let us remember... Iba ang may alam sa batas. But before we end the show, we would like to express our sincere gratitude to Attorney Buenavista, Attorney Cañaveras, and Attorney Colaway for answering our queries and enlightening us with the case. And you have been listening to PS Talks, ang boses ng bawat Pilipino, together with your host, DJ Tresimar and DJ Silver now, now signing, signing off. off.